Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to go through the basics of creating a pivot table. So this video has been requested by one of my subscribers who emailed me and asked for some help in how do they create a pivot table. So a pivot table is a way of summarising a large data set. So I've got this large piece of data here that's come out of an order fulfillment programme and it gives me the data in a item by item basis on the orders that we've taken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarise this down for each salesperson and then how much is then sold by each salesperson in each country. To do that I am somewhere in the data set I just simply go to the insert ribbon and I then press pivot table. Now Excel should be clever enough to work out where the start and the end of your data set is. Obviously on your data sets just double check. I know because I've used this data set before that this is the correct area. You can also connect to external data sources but just as this is a simple one I'm going to keep it just to the data set that's above and then at the bottom we get two, two choices of where to put our pivot table. Do we want a brand new worksheet and that's where the pivot table will be, or would we like to add it to either the one that we're on, the worksheet we're on, or another existing worksheet. I'm going to choose this top option. Again, there is a th another option here at the bottom about adding it to the data model. Just for today's video, though, we're not going to touch data models. That's something to do with Power Query. So if I press OK... We now get the building blocks to build our pivot table. So we've got all the field names that we had on the invoices worksheet. And we now have four potential areas to put them in. If I was to tick any of these boxes at the side, if they contain numerical information, that would automatically put it into the value box. If I tick anything and it's got text-based information in, it would automatically go into row. It doesn't automatically populate the other two boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tick salesperson. And what it's now done is it's given me each salesperson's name just once. So where on the previous page we saw their names multiple times, it's done a bit like a remove duplicates. It's given me each unique value. If I now go and I'm going to add extended price because this is the total for each row of data you can see a value next to each salesperson so that is the total monetary value that they have sold in this period now I'm going to add another dimension to this now we've got this this row dimension here I'm going to add a column dimension I'm going to do that by adding country simply by dragging and dropping it into column So with this, I now get a very similar layout that I got for the rows, except this time it's allocated a column for each unique value. Now if I click away from the pivot table to remove this side panel, you'll see even with my screen, which is a, a wide screen, I can't see all of the countries. Now if you look, just for a reference, Andrew in Argentina sold 477. Now, what I can do is I can move my pivot table around. So just because I've allocated things to a particular box at the moment doesn't mean they've got to stay there. If I grab hold of country and column, I can move it into the same box as salesperson. And then what we'll see is a total for the salesperson, then broke down by the countries they've sold in. Next salesperson and break down. If I wanted to collapse this area, rather than going to each of these little minor signs and collapsing, I can go to a salesperson, and on the Analyze ribbon, I can use this button here to collapse. So I can now see as much or as little information as I want, either by activating or deactivating the plus and minus, or by using the plus and the minus buttons on the ribbon. Now the reason that it's that way round, that it's giving me the salesperson's total, broke down by country, is the order that these items appear in the row box. If I swap that round, so I put the salesperson below country, you'll see it now changes. So I've now got the total for Argentina, broke down by salesperson, next country, 
breakdown. I'm going to take salesperson and I'm going to move it into the column box. So you can see, even though I've moved the data around, in essence, I'm still displaying the same data. I'm still getting Andrew in Argentina is selling 477. But without this side panel, I can now see the whole pivot table. Okay. Now, I've not filled in one of the boxes. I've not filled in the filter. If I put the company name into the filter, you will see on our screen we have the word company name and then all with a drop down. Now, there are three drop downs. There's a row one, a column one, and this one next to all. These are filters. Now, the one at the top originally was designed to go from one extreme to the other, so I could see every single company we sell to, or I could see just a, a single company. However, when Microsoft upgraded Excel to have the ribbon, it also upgraded the functionality of this. So we can now select multiple items. The drawback with that is it's not visually very obvious what has been picked but it now does allow you to pick multiple items. So if you've got a really large data set, and maybe you were going to put region in there, you could use that as a way of picking just specific regions that are under your remit. Now, if I put that back to all, you will see that on here, we can actually filter and see as many or as few of the countries as we want. So there is no need to activate an additional show uh, select multiple if i pick a few countries you'll see the grand total row is now based on what is visible on the screen and likewise we've got a column one that we can do a similar thing with and again the grand total column then filters to clear your filters rather than going to each one we can, under the Analyze ribbon, you'll see there's a clear button and there's a clear filters. The ones under the Data ribbon and the one on the Home ribbon under Sort and Filter also work to clear. Now within here, I can actually format all of my numbers to show as currency because by default, any formatting that you have on a pivot table, on pivot data, sorry, doesn't then get applied to the pivot table itself. So to change the format of the numbers, I go down to the value box, I press the little arrow, and I then pick value field settings. So from there, before I change the, the format, I can also change the calculation that it's performing. Now if I press number format, and I now pick currency, when I press OK, and OK again, you'll now see all those figures are formatted to show us currency with two decimal places. Now the final thing that I'll show you in this introduction to pivot tables is a facility to look at the underlying data to drill into the detail. So let's say for argument's sakes, I select Argentina and I select Andrew. Now I might be looking at that figure and wondering how did that figure come about. I could go to the invoices worksheet and I could put filters on and find that, that data. However, with the pivot table, if I double click on the figure, what it does is it generates a new worksheet and it contains all the columns from the original worksheet, but in this case, the two rows that are that figure. So just a little bit of mental maths. 155 and 322 make 477. Now if I go back to the pivot table, that drill down is based on what I can see. So if you had multiple items selected, you'd need to be a little bit more careful where you double click. Within the pivot table now, if I was to double click where I am, I would get the same drill down as I've just got. If I double clicked here, I would get Andrew for the three countries. And likewise, if I double clicked here, I'd get Argentina for the three salespeople. So to get the full drill down of what you're looking at, remember to go to the bottom right hand corner. And obviously, 
by doing that, because there's more salespeople and there's more countries, I get more rows of data. Okay, guys, so that was a basic introduction to pivot tables. There is lots more that I could do with pivot tables, but I just wanted to keep this video brief just to give you um, an idea of how to make a pivot table, and I hope this helps the person who asked for it. If you like this video, guys, can you give me a thumbs up? And if you want to see more videos from me, please remember to press the, sub the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell because I plan to do two videos a week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.